Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today I'm going to be giving you my review and opinion of the Tanaya Oasi, a well-established high-end climbing shoe that's worn by some of the best climbers in the world. So first of all, who are Tanaya and why are they blowing up the climbing world at the moment? Well, they were established in 1997 by Jose Luiz. Now he's a passionate climber, putting up big wall routes in the Andes, new routes on El Cap, and he's a professional sailor, being champion of Spain in sailing, which makes no difference to climbing shoes, but it just shows his dedication and passion to the craft he's chosen. And Tanaya are obsessed with performance. They want to make high-end precision climbing shoes that are super comfortable at the same time. But it's their athlete rostra that I find fascinating. I mean, very recently, they've stolen Chris Sharma from Evolve. They've got Jimmy Webb and Miho Nanaka from 510. And if you look at their athlete list, it's filled with top-end climbers. Climbers from different genres and aspects of the sport, both high-end rock climbing and competition climbing. So the question is, why? Why are these athletes moving to Tanaya? I mean, they've always had Alex Magos, right? He's been there since pretty much, well, very, very early on, and he's one of the best climbers in the world. He could surely pick and choose whoever he wants as a shoe brand, but he went with Tanaya. Now, possibly Tanaya are filling this gap, this void left by 510 merging into Adidas, and possibly they're just opening up their marketing budgets. Maybe they're spending more money on athletes, and that's why they've got all the big names or maybe their shoes are just that good. Watch this space. So let's go through some of the features of the Tanaya Oasi. So out of the box, it is downturned and has quite an aggressive flick at the end of the toe box. But as you can see from this version, which is mine, I've worn for a couple of months, it does quickly flatten out and you lose a little bit of that downturn. The rubber is Vibram XS grip with 3.5 millimeters of thickness. So it's very sensitive and very good at smearing. There isn't a huge amount of toe patch rubber on the shoe and that's a bit different compared to other more newer shoes. Think the uh, Boreal Mutant, for example, which has a huge patch on the front. This is narrower, very thin and very specific. So perhaps more suited to outdoor climbing than indoor routes where you get all those fancy toe catches going on. The heel as well is simple, uh, none of those 3D pr protrusions that you see on some shoes. Again, quite thin, very simple, very narrow design. The shoe features this very unique lacing Velcro style system, which we're going to chat more about in a second. There's microfiber in the upper and this very large lycra bi-directional stretch tongue that again adds to the overall comfort of this shoe. The angle of this is designed so the uh, toe patch section and the shape of the shoe itself pushes the heel down when climbing, which allows for more precision and allows more rubber to hit the rock. So that's the technical features. What do I think of this shoe? And this is kind of tricky because for a long time, I didn't really know what to say about it. With the Tanaya Oasi, it's certainly hitting that middle ground, the all-rounder shoe, and that's what I found with it as well. Sizing-wise, I'm a UK 8.5 and this is a UK 8. So I do downsize a little bit, but I reckon that if I was going for a super aggressive fit, perhaps for competition climbing, I'd step down even more. So perhaps UK 7.5. So it's similar to La Sportiva style sizing, if that helps at all. I have narrow feet and this fits me really nicely. And we'll talk more about the comfort features in a second. The rubber itself is superb. So, so sticky, which is what I'd expect from Vibram XS Grip Rubber but what I didn't expect is that it's equally good on slabs and on overhangs. Not quite sure how they managed to achieve that. But I'm also a big crimp fan and that means I need a shoe that stands on little tiny edges. And again, the Tanaya does that pretty damn well. Personally, I'd want something a little stiffer for pure sport climbing, but this does hit that middle ground really, really well and it's accurate and precise, which is what you want for a high-end shoe of this caliber. 
It's excellent at everything, but it doesn't feel like a specialised weapon. There's some shoes, I'm thinking Boreal Ninja for example, it's got all these fancy technologies. Scarpa, they load their shoes with fancy things that help to improve your climbing. The Oasi doesn't really do that. What it does, it goes, here, here's a basic toolkit, it's going to take you to a level and then the rest is up to you. It's actually kind of a nice feeling because when you do a climb in the Tanayas, you feel like it's you. The shoe is complimenting you, sure, it's helping you, but it's not giving you an extra edge. Everything you achieve in this shoe is all your own ability, and that's quite an addictive feeling. It's a little bit like an old school Mustang. It's got loads of power in it, but it hasn't got something like traction control. So when you go around a corner, it's you who's in control. And I like that about this shoe. Now, when I was writing this review, I kind of thought I'd leave it there. It's a great all-round shoe, but it just doesn't feel that sexy. However, there's more to it, because this shoe is a transformer. It's all to do with this lacing slash Velcro system. And it's kind of complicated. It's in a Z shape and it's got lots of adjustability. Something that initially I found ridiculously annoying. I don't want to faff around with the lacing system with a shoe. I just want to zip them up and they work. With the Tanai, you have to work at it a little bit more. So when I initially set it up, I just did it normally tight, similar to both sides, strapped it up and got on with climbing. And that was fine. But where this excels is that adjustability. So for example, I had this boulder problem that required a very specific, very difficult heel hook move, where you really had to crank down on the heel whilst leaning back a bit. Put a lot of pressure through that heel system and it just wasn't working. The heel was flopping around and feeling rubbish and I was kind of almost giving up on it. But then I adjusted the back. So you pull it out, readjust it, tighten up that back lace, but loosen up the front one a little bit. Immediately it changed the whole shoe. Suddenly I could really crank the back down, which pulled the whole heel system in, but didn't make the toe section overly tight. Immediately the heel hook worked. I could do the move and I couldn't touch it before. So I thought, okay, I'll take this a step further. Went to a slab, loosened up the front, tightened up the back, and suddenly I could put down more rubber onto that slab. This thing just morphs into whatever shoe you want it to be. And that is such an advantage. Imagine you're going to a crag for the first time or a bouldering area for the first time. You don't know the kind of climbs you're going to be climbing. You don't know the rock. You don't know if it's overhanging. It doesn't matter. You can bring the Tanaya Oasi and it will fit whatever rock or style of climbing you want to do. There are some disappointments with this shoe. Uh, I don't really love the shape of it. As you can see, very quickly it's changed into a flatter profile, which although I don't notice a particular difference in performance, it would be nice to have that toe box a little more downturned for longer. And this sort of comes into the other problem with the shoe, which is, Yes, it's simple and it just lets you climb, but it is missing some of that technology that we've seen coming through into the newer shoes. And if you're a climber who's grown up using this new technology, you might miss it if you go back to the more old school Tanaya Oasi. The toe patch is interesting. Personally, I prefer a much bigger section and that might just be because I'm a bit of a rubbish climber, but I like just to wodge my toe in and let the shoe do the rest. With this, you have to be quite specific, which might actually improve your climbing, but for me, I'd want more rubber there. The heel, although it is nicely adjustable, there are no 3D little sections. It doesn't really help. It's not particularly bulbous. It doesn't roll forwards. It's just all about how good you are at heel hooking. And some people are going to love it, and some will want that extra technology. So what kind of climber is going to buy this shoe? Well. I think it's perfectly suited for people who like to mix it up a bit. And I'm going to use Alex Magos as an example of this. That man boulders to a high level, he sport climbs to a high level, and he competes in IFSC World Cups. And he does a lot of it in the Tanaya Oasi. So if you're a climber who wants to try different things, this could be the shoe for you. It also is a fairly good transitional shoe from that beginner to more advanced because it's not going to get in the way of your climbing. As I said before, this thing lets you climb and just sort of stands back and does its best. So it's good for beginners who are getting better and just want to push themselves a little bit more. I think high-end boulders might struggle with the shoe a little bit. They might need those extra features. But if you're a do-everything climber, this could be for you.
So that's it, my opinion on the Tenaya Oasi. And with all the gear shows, if you want to pick one up or find out more information, the link is in the description below. And do let me know what you think of this shoe, because at the end of the day, it's only my opinion, and I'd be fascinated to hear what you think of it. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.